Like the zoology professor, we also like to cross the thin line that separates theory from practice and walk kilometers, miles of virgin river in search of the experience. Seduced by the story of our little frog, we wanted to verify if, as we believe from the beginning, the big multinational pharmaceutical companies had taken advantage of the Amazonian Indians' knowledge. We traveled for days until we reached the stretch of river shared by Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. The Tacuna Indians live here, in settlements on the riverbanks where evangelization left its mark, and where this ethnic group, even with a maximum degree of cultural adaptation, maintains some traditional uses and customs. The scientific name Phylomedusa, the name recognized around the world, is substituted here by bakor, or health frog, which is what generations of Takunas have called this frog for centuries. Today, some important members of the settlement are going to show us the properties that so many laboratories claim to have discovered. The most surprising thing is to see how these Catholic natives blend such a pagan ritual with the symbol of the cross that hangs from their necks. The frogs were captured this evening, but without hurting them. They cannot live in captivity, however, or they will die. They stop producing their magical alchemy when they lose their freedom. Under a tree, with a gas lamp, they are heating up some wooden needles, which they will use to scratch their wrists. <laughs> this is where the frog poison will penetrate the body through osmosis. Three minutes are enough to notice the effects. Yatul squeezes the parotid glands of the animal, as if it were a tube of medicine. He administers the doses to his friends, who have Spanish names, but dark native skin like his. Slowly, Angelo, Manuel, and Benito begin to succumb to the power of the frog venom. We are attending the same ritual that some biologists sent here by multinational pharmacy companies witnessed a few months ago according to what the villagers have told us. They paid them less than two dollars for each frog and took away two sacks full. <laughs> its purpose is not just to obtain the hallucinogenic effect, the natives use the frogs when they have serious headaches, chronic pains, or diarrhea. It is an efficient remedy, and mothers also give it to their children for certain illnesses. The dosage is calculated by the adults, since they know that more than three scratches on the wrist could kill them. For some, this frog is the end of laziness apathy. You're up. You feel strong. You feel happy. You have only made one scratch, but they have told us that there are people who make more than one, more scratches. Could a person die from many of them? If you make many scratches this way, you die, for sure because it's a very strong poison. At, at first my head hurt, then my head seemed to be flying, and then, then my stomach began to, to turn and feel really strange until finally I, I, well, I threw up. In, in just a few minutes it was over, and now I feel much better. I feel very strong and happy. And now I feel much, much better. 
After this lesson in natural medicine, just another one on environmental education, the frogs are set free. Thou shalt not kill is the only command that fully coincides with their culture. The indigenous peoples are also being pursued by biotechnological companies in an attack called biopiracy. People disguised as ecologists, wearing environmental protection t-shirts, are getting close to the shamans, uh, the pajas, the curacas, the medicine men of the 180 indigenous cultures in the case of Brazil. They are trying to appropriate their knowledge in the same way as if someone tried to patent a host in uh, Christian culture. As if someone from the Amazon went to Spain or the United States and patented something so sacred to us as the host. In the Amazonian world, there are also sacred things, active living beings that have been living in an orderly manner for millions of years, long before the DNA of our species even came about. Here and there, you will find every color, shape, aroma. 80% of all plant species on Earth spread over the heart of the tropical jungle. In an area that occupies the equivalent of one city block, in one hectare of Amazonian terrain, we could identify up to 300 different species of trees. In France, for example, in this same space, we could only identify 50. This is what Amazonia is like, disproportionate and fascinating Gigantic, but delicate. A tree belonging to the Papilionaceae family, with wood as red as burning embers, gave Brazil its name. The vegetation and the republic are united to that extreme, and to that extent, the future of the great Brazilian nation should be the same as that of the Palo Brazil tree. But oblivious to history and etymology, the thieves of living things feel at home here calculating every corner of this jungle as if trying to figure out the best way to make the most profit. The plant kingdom is at the service of mankind, feeding him involuntarily with every strike, an economic empire that shows no consideration, only dividends. Since the white man arrived in the Amazon, many have given their lives in order to interpret its natural message, to reveal its hidden secrets. Some famous botanists died here, classifying unknown plants in remote places. Their intentions were almost always good, to learn in order to preserve. But sometimes their research lighted the way for those who are only interested in making big money. For them, the Palo Brazil tree, the rubber plant, and the cocoa tree were only useful on supermarket shelves, labeled with big brand names, but not as a part of an ecosystem which depends on a subtle and indispensable balance. While I observe these plants of much economic interest for the Amazon, I remember the problem of biopiracy, which is unfortunately devastating the Amazonian region. Plants from Amazonia are used by many international laboratories, but the profits from this never, usually never make it back here. This is why we now have laws to protect our plant resources. We certainly achieve a legal and fair use of the resources of Amazonia through these rules and these new regulations. 
nome da Amazônia. When Adolfo Duca, the famous botanist to whom we owe the names of many Amazonian trees, discovered this tree, Marilyn Monroe had not yet been born. The Pau Rosa captivated the scientist with the wonderful aroma that its bark gave off. He christened it with the scientific name, Aniba Rosai Odora. <laughs> 